Hello? There you are. Hello. Hello. Okay, sorry, sorry for the, the delay. Um, we're ready to start the system admin training for today. Um, we're going to start with what role the system administrator takes within the, the relationship. Um, they play a crucial role in most aspects of it, and I'm just going to kind of briefly go through their role, and then I'll be going through certain functions that they'll be responsible for, as well as touching on various things that they'll that should be of inter special interest to the system administrator first other roles within the organization. The first role is to set up the hierarchy. Yesterday we had a webinar on the boarding setup process and this is usually done with the administrator. So I'm not going to go through details on what that entails um, as we had a full hour spent on it yesterday. The employees will be escalating their issues to the system administrator, first of all. And so they need a general knowledge of how the system works, as well as you know the roles that each of their employees are undertaking to understand what tasks they'll be doing. And they'll be maintaining the database. They'll be concerned over things like every item has a different style created, and that makes potentially thousands of different styles and the impact on that of that on you know running their reports or running um, you know transactions so they need to be conscious of of things that they can be doing that create difficulty you know if they're creating um, items with commas or um, slashes are things that you know have potential to create problems. They would be the ones concerned with the impact of that. System administrator is usually the point of contact of the organization with us. Usually things are rooted through them so that they have an understanding for what the issue is and they relay it to the individuals under them. And another role of the system administrator is to maintain those employees, make sure that the, the roles that they're given match the duties that they will be doing, as well as setting up email alerts, ter um, terminating employee numbers if they're not used, making modifications uh, regarding the employees. And then they need to have some basic knowledge of the system. You know, how does a POS communicate with the CAS? You know, changes are made on CAS. How does the POS know of those changes? And then, you know, if there are issues that come up, kind of an understanding of that there are logs for those, for the information to be put in for everything that happens on the POS or CAS in case you know, again, in case there's an issue, say there's fraud, and um, they, they need to look at those logs to see exactly what transpired, you know, where are the logs, what's, what's in them. Um, so, that, so that's the role of the system administrator. In, in regards to messages, um, information is transmitted between the CAS and the POS using JMS messages. So if those messages aren't able to communicate between the two, you know, that's when you'll get different information on CAS from the POS. And so that link is, is what needs to be maintained. Um, so in, in terms of registers, you know, this is usually done at the start of the relationship, adding the registers to the system or deleting them or, you know, whatever needs to be done on those. Um, and then, then we have, you know, it's an agile application, and there's always enhancements or fixing of bugs, et cetera, that goes on with the application. The system administrator is usually the one who, who's up on those changes so that she can or he can re relay that information to the users. You know, there may be an additional discount code that's available. And, you know, so that when the 
cashier rings up the sales, you know, they'll, they'll be aware of that. Or um, recommended items is a new thing being used by the business. You know, they'd be relaying that to their staff so that they know to expect that and how to act on it. Setting up and maintaining the mail server, um, you know, it, it's on the cast to set up. And, um, you know, they would just, usually you set it up once unless, like, the email password has changed or something and there's an issue. But it's, it's something that, you know, like some of these other things are done once up front and usually may not need to be addressed again later. And then backups. In case of some catastrophe, you want to, the system administrator would be the, the person responsible to make sure that they've put in place something for backups of their data um, so that they can be up and running as quickly as possible, you know, if there is some event such as that. Um, so they would need to make sure that those things have been put in place, um, you know, just as a precaution. In, in regard to the setup, system administrator um, would need to make sure that what they're trying to achieve with the system is how they have everything set up. C customer tracking is important to them. They'll need to make sure that their customer groups are established and that they're you know, applying new customers or existing customers to those groups that they've created. And then, you know, if, you know, the other example on here is effective reports. If vital information isn't being retained or being input in the first place, such as when you put in a new item being received, you don't put in cost, well, some of your reports that, that uh, provide some of that vital information, um, tracking profitability will of course be inaccurate. And so part of the setup is making sure that the goals that they have are everything's being set up to be able to best achieve those goals. And that includes setting up the hierarchy, maintaining the classifications so that everything populates how they want it to. Um, you know, special characters you do have, a, you know, depending on what they are and where they are, are read as code. Um, and so that can mess up the results that someone's looking for, you know, because it's not able to process it, thinking that it's giving a command rather than just part of the description. And then, you know, like monitoring the classifications, making sure that those haven't you know, grown to thousands of um, sizes, you know, because they're, they're just being created with every, every item a different version of size on each one. Um, and then they're responsible for setting up and creating stores, vendors, registers. All this is usually done up front and, you know, it was discussed in yesterday's webinar exactly what needs to be done on those. And, you know, that, that's usually not a, a continued maintenance. And then, you know, inventory. You know, making sure that when, when inventory is put out there on the floor that it is acknowledged in the system, that you have received those items either through a purchase order or through the receiving function so that you can look at quantity on hand and get accurate information. And then setting up the gateway. Again, it's usually a process that's done once or if there's a change, and that's done by the system administrator. If gift cards are added, that would also be part of the gateway setup, or if um, Dwala is enabled. And then the shop local. Um, most businesses are setting that up as they're one of their initial things that are done, that is done at the start of the relationship. You want to make sure that um, the store reflects the right information for it, and then it's a pretty quick process just to add shop local. And then setting up transaction codes. You know what? Discount codes, coupon codes, tax codes, 
um, refund reasons, there's various codes that are needed or, or added as time goes by. Some of these things may not be needed initially, but as the system is used more fully, they come into play. And so it's good to know about them now so that when it comes time to um, add discounts, they know exactly where to find it and, and how to take care of that. I'm going to go through fairly quickly um, some of the highlights of, of what's done on the system so that you have a feel for where they are. Um, some, some of you may have done this a long time ago and know it's done and, and don't need to address it, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. I just kind of want to touch on them so everyone can see where they are on the system um, to, to get a feel for it. Going into my, my domain as a system administrator. This is um, on our test domain. It's, it's on the next version right now, um, 3.6.4, so there may be a little bit of differences from what you see on yours um, from, than what I have on here. So just, um, you know, it's, it's just a test um, server. This is my um, dashboard settings on here. And our configurations. Um, payment gateways, I'm, I'm not going to spend much time discussing these because usually people have set these up and are set. Um, you can set them to be reflected at all venues or if you have differences by venue or store, set them here. And you'd select which payment gateway you'll be using. Mine, mine already has my um, input on these and then you'd save and, you know, those, those are reflected in um, um, the places that you've, you've asked them to be sent to. POS settings, um, from, from this configuration screen, you can set your, your backup settings of where you want the backup to be um, sent to. The mail settings, I'll just, I'll just briefly show, they just need basic setup based on the email address to be used. Um, the, the required information on all of the fields with the asterisk in front of it is mandatory information that must be inputted in order for it to save. Anything else would be optional. On these mail settings, there's the ability to test the settings to make sure that they're done rather than just setting them and not knowing if, if they're going to be working. So it's a nice feature having that. Um, so you have comfort in knowing that, you know, it is working. Speed keys are set up under configurations. They can be set up by, you know, for everyone to have the same ones or by store. Um, you would merely click on the, the setting, select what you want under that, um, that key, select it, and then save. So at the the cashier, when they press F1 on their keyboard, it'll populate with yo-yo in this case. Um, to, to, if that's an item that's off, often sold or for some reason you want to select that as your speed keys. There's an option for all of these, um, you know, your basic F1 through F12 and then you can also add additional ones using Shift F1 through 12 and then you can save that. A cash drawer settings, um, usually done once at the start of the relationship when you want your cash drawers to open up. Um, opening bank and closing bank, again, usually just done at the beginning of the process. Um, determining what kind of information you want at the start of each day and the end of each day when you're opening bank and closing each bank, um, each day. Um, usually, and this may not work for all businesses, but usually people open bank with a simple mode. They put in the amount of cash they have, and um, end of day, 
more often they'll, they'll do the detailed mode of exactly what it is and have do the breakdown. But whichever way works best for your business, um, you know, you want to set it in, in that way. Um, if banks are not closed, you know, the next morning it'll still prompt for the bank to be opened and it'll automatically close um, at uh, 4, 4 a.m., I believe. Package handling. So if you've set up packages, um, this, this is just telling it to accept those packages. You know, if you've created three items that you're packaging together and have a special price for those items, creating a package, um, this is telling the system if you wing those up to, to, you know, charge them at the special package price. We also have the feature on the POS if you have those three items at the special pr package price, when you ring up two of those items, it'll prompt and say, are you interested in adding blank for a certain amount of money to create a package? And the cashier can then ask the customer if they'd be interested in that. Um, besides this screen that just says that you want to use packages, those packages need to be set up um, as an item. There's an item that's called package, and that would be your what your package is called. And then you go in and you decide what items go under that package. So there's a couple of steps to create a package. Um, this is just one, you know, the, the first part of it. And if you look on um, our wiki site, It'll go through the process of what needs to be done to create the package. Um, recommended items. Always recommend, well, I recommend this um, for, for customers to use because, um, like we mentioned in, in yesterday's webinar, it's really good for the cashier to be able to offer the customers something else to buy. Um, and this gives it, rather than them randomly picking something, it's what you want them to be recommending to the customer. And so you can, um, you know, there's various methods of the recommendation. Um, this is, you know, this is the long way of doing it, which can work for a lot of customers, where, you know, on this you select the item and then it, and then you put on here three items for it to suggest based on them purchasing the first item. A little bit of work um, to add all of those, but depending on your business, um, it, it, it could be a, a strong way to, um, to, to suggest exactly what that customer may be wanting. Um, this neighbor it's called just recommended items, suggests these three items on every sale. So it's the three items that you want to push that, you know, complement almost every transaction that will be happening. It, it prompts the cashier to say, hey, you know, it could be items that are just sitting on the counter that you just want them to mention or, you know, and it could be even seasonal. You, you know, you, you want to push a certain item right now and you just want it on the screen for um, the cashier to mention to every sale. Um, other customer purchased, um, you know, again, I, I, I mentioned that this is a, um, our, our test account and this is up and coming um, where it, based on the sale amount, it'll recommend what others have purchased, what other items customers who've bought the same product have also purchased. And that's a good way of, um, you know, having those extra sales in there. It's what's used by some of the big, you know, Amazon uses that to, you know, suggest other items to customers. It'll, it'll be a strong feature. Um, other other POS settings. Um, this is where, if you want to add the CRM builder, um, this is where you you designate it that you want it. 
if you want refunds to be verified off of the sales receipt, you know, so that, you know, it, it pulls it pulls the sales receipt data for the refund. Um, you would check that here. Or if the mandatory fields um, aren't required for when you add customers, such as email address, um, you can check that here and those won't be, those customers will be saved without that additional information needing, being needed. Um, reorder levels. I discussed this in a bit of detail on another webinar called Inventory Management. Again, I feel like this is a pretty strong tool that we have in order for the system to kind of help out in helping you see what items could need reorder. Um, and it's just part of, you know, being used in conjunction with reports and just you knowing what you need. But, you know, we have various um, ways of determining what needs to be reordered. So on this screen under configuration, you're setting how you want that reorder to be looked at. You know, um, is it based on your daily sales average? And you'd put in the number of days and um, the date range that you want that to be looked at. Or by item, how many, um, you know, your minimum and maximum levels are, um, it'll determine when something needs to be reordered. Or just from um, using the sales period, you'd say the past, and th this is just going from today's date past the number of days that you're interested in, um, you know, how many of the items you needed and, and the quantity on hand to determine what needs to be reordered. Um, most dynamic option is um, the daily sales average. You determine the number of days in your in your period that you want um, stock of the item and then you pick the date range that you're looking at. So if it's a seasonal item you don't necessarily want the last 30 days of it because maybe you haven't brought it out for the year yet. So you can pick a different date range to, to give you kind of accurate information as to um, you know, what you're looking for historically. Uh, setting up the customers, um, you know, this is done under the configuration tab. We have two types of categories. One of them is static groups, where you're creating the, the name of your group. Um, you know, a group that you, frequ that frequents your business, it has some kind of a tie, um, you know, what, whatever it is um, that you want to add customers to and be able to track them and know how they're doing. Um, you can also add a price book which will provide special pricing that's attached to that static group. So if they buy something uh, that's, and, and you probably will advertise specifically to this static group, um, if they buy something that will be rung, rung up at the, the discounted price um, directly for them. And then the other type of group is our frequency-based groups. And there's three different ways of determining how you want to um, have customers fall within these groups, you know, based on gross margin. You know, these are the, the people that kind of make the most for you. Um, and you can, you can base that on that. You'd set um, the range for when you're looking at that. Um, you know, to see who falls into that category. And you'd put, you'd create names for your labels and, and what it takes to reach those, la those levels. Um, the other way is, is sales, where it is based on the, the, the dollar amount of sales. Um, when they reach, when a customer reaches that level, they will you know, be in that, that group. And, and then the, the last one is transactions, which is number of transactions. You know, when they've done, you know, whatever your group is, um, you know, the, if you've done 10 transactions with you, come in and done, they'll be considered in your top dogs category. And you can market specifically to those people 
Um, so you set the name, you set your levels, and then um, go to your reports, you know, when you're ready to do something with them, advertising, special promotions to the groups, etc. cetera. Um, you'll know who fits into those categories and, um, you know, you can advertise as, as you need to. Dashboard settings, you know, that initial screen when you first come on, um, these are set here with what specifically how you want them and data you want it on here. Shop local. This is where that is set up and um, before you set it up here you want to make sure that your store is properly set up. So I always recommend before going on here to go in to look at your store um, to see if it, it has the information that's needed. So to modify a store, I'm assuming not at this point that everybody has created, you know, has at least the basics of their domain set up, so they do have a store created. So on all of these management tabs, um, the first one that mentions like store is creating it in the first place. Zone, warehouse, venue would be creating one. We're not creating a new one, we're just modifying an, an existing one. So we would go to, um, it's under hierarchy, modify hierarchy. We're going to, we want to look at our store to see if we need to modify it, select it, find it, and it shows me the store, it shows me my store manager, how I have things set up. So for the shop local, this address information is important um, because that's what's shown on those local searches. You want your hours shown um, so that your customers, if you show up on their searches, you want those hours there so that they know whether they should show up at your door or not. Um, this first line of the header is what the local searches use to identify the, your business name. So if you're using Shop Local, this first line should be the name of your business. And then just in terms of um, looking at <coughs> the store, um, uh, I'll, I'll kind of go through some of this while, while I'm on the screen. Um, you know, your receipt, how do you want your receipt set up? Your footer, all sales final, you know, full refunds within 30 days, whatever it happens to be, um, and whatever you want on your header. And then we have an area for promotional messages. It shows up um, pretty much underneath the footer, anything else you want to say, you know, bring back coupon for 10% off in the next two weeks or, you know, anything that, that you're interested in. And then there's other settings that are done here that are specific to the store. Um, you know, if a tax rate needs to be overridden, it's done on this screen. Um, and just various other, other settings. And so, any changes would be modified here, and, and that would save them. So um, I'm going to go back to the shop local, and, and it should reflect that information on store hours, etc. Already put that guy over. So the one I'm looking at, what we just looked at was Maddie's Boutique. Um, it shows the store hours, the phone number, etc. And you just move it over to this area, so it's a shop local reg store so that it's part of the program. And that would just be save and next. It shows you what you have set up. You check the box and then enable shop local. That's all that needs to be done on um, your end. Um, you just want to make sure that the items that you created have good descriptions so that they are very searchable. And um, you know, you should be able to show um, and, the, and then that you have quantities. Um, if you're not maintaining your inventory quantities on the system, those items may show up, but they would always show up as out of stock, and you know that's not a good um, thing you want to portray if you really do have a store full of the goods and just haven't you know, bothered to put them in the system, put the quantities in the system. So um, you know, if everything's well maintained, um, some of these tools are, are very effective of, you know, bringing in customers or um, enhancing their experience at your store. Um, the, the next area, you know, I'm, I'm going to go through some of these tabs um, to, to, to show some of the features that we have and some of the things that, as system administrator, you're going to want to um, be aware of and, and use on a regular basis. One of them is 
users. Um, you know, you want to make sure that your employees, everyone has their own login to the system, and especially in case, you know, anything happens, you want to know who is the person signed on. If it's just cashier and login is cashier123, um, you don't know who was actually giving that customer a 100% discount or, you know, making changes, you know, refunding credit card transactions or something. Um, so you do want to, you know, maintain the controls to, to be able to tell, you know, who's doing what. So the screen, you're creating employees, modifying them, and um, modifying your pa this is where an employee would go to to modify their own password, which all the passwords expire every 90 days except for system administrator's password. Um, so they would go on here prior to that and change your password so that you know they can log on to the POS without any without any trouble. Um, you know one thing that I, I know you guys have probably heard a thousand times is you do want to make sure that email addresses are set up for each employee so that they receive those alerts saying their password's about to expire. And so they, they're, you know, you're making them responsible for going on CAS and modifying that password so that doesn't, you know, so they're not, they don't show up for work Monday morning and, you know, they're the sole employee there to ring up the transactions and they can't log on and there's nobody there to, uh, to help them with it. So um, vital is, is making sure that those email addresses are put on each each employee's file. And um, I'll show you where you know that's done here. Um, I'll just pick a, a random person from mine. Um, you know, you just put their email address right in here and um, modify that to, to save it. If you are doing the clock in and clock out feature, um, the second page of this create employee or modify employee needs to be completed for it to um, retain that information on the clock in and clock out. So the asterisk information is what is required. Um, this was set up for an ADP setup, um, but it's, it's also used by the clock in and out if, if you're not going through an ADP system or anything. You just want to keep track of employees clocking in and out. So that would be um, needed in order for uh, you know, the employee information to be um, maintained. And then I just thought wanted to also um, show modify rights. Crucial to the users of your system, you do want to make sure that you are giving them access to everything that they need access to, but not more. Um, so in this case, I have Don, the store manager, he has full access to everything on the POS, of course, because he's the guy in charge of what goes on with that POS. Um, less, you know, there's more functions of the, of the CAS that he does not have access to because those aren't pertinent to his job usually. You may have a store manager who you're you want them to take on a bigger role within the company and you want to give them to access give them access to um, some of the other functions that aren't normally given to a store manager. So this is where you would add those and then save it and then that person would have access to them. Um, so this is a good way to, um, you know, just make sure that, you know, that role has the rights that they need. You know, when you set them up and give them the role, um, those those rights that go with it are automatic and you can't take away rights from a role. You just need to, um, you know, change a role to something lower and then if there's some rights that need to be added. So you can always add rights to people based on their role. You just can't take them away. So it's just um, something to think about how it, how it works and to make sure that all employees have the rights that they need without giving them more um, then you're comfortable with having them have access to. Um, inventory classifications on management, you know, again, this first area is creating them in the first place. Master item, you create 
and modify on this screen, um, but on classifications, you know, departments, categories, subcategories, this is where you would add new ones. Attributes, the same thing, you'd just be adding new ones, vendor, um, you know, you're, you're adding new ones. So if you are, if you have existing ones that you need to make changes to, you'd go to the bottom option of modify, um, you know, and select what it is and then make your, um, you know, adjustments that you want based on that. Um, so just wanted to point out, you know, the modifying of, you know, things that are already created. I do want to show um, the, the screen for master item. Um, this is used for a lot of different functions, and I just want people to be comfortable with knowing where, where to go for this. Um, creating a new item, you know, everything with an asterisk is required information. There's three different types of items. Auto selected is store item. That's frequent, the most frequent one, so that, that's kind of auto populated there. Also have service items which don't have quantities. Um, you know, it's, it's a service. It's say repairs. You're, you don't have a, a stock of 10 of those. You just sell that repair as you go. Um, it keeps track of sales. Just in your inventory reports, of course, it, service items don't show up because they're not applicable. Uh, package item is creating the name of the package. And then on that other screen is where you put the items that go into the package. So this would be creating a package um, so that when you go to the other screen, it's your option for the, for the package um, to have the items put under. Um, so the basic information is put here. When you put in an item ID, um, it populates with the similar um, numbers or letters um, for the UPC. Give it a name. Um, again, we want that to be as, or you want that to be as descriptive as possible and as, um, you know, searchable as possible so that customers do come in using their shop local feature based on this name slash description being given. Um, the cost of the item and then the selling price. Departments, um, you can select from the drop-down or if what you're looking for is not part of your drop-down, you can add, you know, the, the one you're looking for over here. This side would say other and then you would just add whatever department you want it to be called. And that works for, you know, all of the classifications and attributes. Um, select your tax code. If it's not available, you do need to go to um, transaction codes and create a new one for it to show up in the drop-down. Tax inclusive means that, um, you know, if you sell something for $10 and you've pressed tax inclusive, that, and your tax is say 10%, um, that would have a sales price of 91 cents and then nine cents would be taxes. So the customer sees it as, you know, they're paying $10 for the item. You are keeping track of the taxes um, so that you can remit those to the state and, and you, you know, you know that and it'll show that your sale is for 91 cents and nine cents went to taxes. So um, you, you have accurate ac accounting for what went on. But there's some items that, you, you know, you, you do want to just have rounded numbers and, of course, charge taxes if necessary. Um, all items do require a vendor, so you'd select from your drop-down the vendor that you want. Um, you know, your, your options down here, you know, you have your search op options, um, your item lookup, and mass modify. Um, I, you know, from here you can go to that screen and make changes to, you know, say a, a department. Um, you know, you want to change something as a group on, on, on a large number of items. Easiest way is just to do the mass modify and have the system do it, but um, do it carefully because it, it will make the change to all those items. Um, cost and sales price cannot be done as a mass modify because um, we found that most people don't want that ability to be able to um, potentially 
um, create a disaster on their hands of um, making a mistake. Um, departments, categories, etc. If they're done wrong, you know, isn't as impactful as you know changing selling price or cost. So those aren't available in the mass modify. Um, transaction codes. Um, you know, this is where they're set up, and it and it gives you know. I, I won't go through all of the, these, but they are used various times by, by most customers. Um, you know, the various, um, you know, say coupon options. You know, you can create your coupons. You know, you can have your coupons that are only applicable um, certain, you know, days of the week, certain times. Um, and then on the POS, you can set those up for automatic coupons so that, you know, if someone rings it up during that special time, you know, that, that coupon will automatically be reflected on the transaction. So a lot of options with coupons, um, you know, and, and, you know, play with that and, and make them work however best works for you. Um, same with discounts, we have a couple options, um, you know, just a regular percent, you know, 10% off, the time frame that you want that discount to be applicable, um, you know, it's saved and then it, then it should populate on your POS to be available at either the item level or at the transaction level. Um, another type of coupon uh, discount that we have is a cost plus the percent, um, and that, that discount would be just based on you know, what amount you have in the cost plus a percent over that would be the um, price that would be charged for the item. Good, um, good, good option in some cases, um, you know, but it, it does mean that the customer would kind of know what your cost is. So, um, well, they wouldn't have to really know, but, um, you know, it's, it's thrown out there in that, in that way. Um, email alerts. This is an area that's important to system administrators because it get, lets them have a, a pulse on what's going on in the business when they're not necessarily there. So um, you'd, there's quite a few options here, probably about 30 or 40 different types of transactions that happen. And you can select who receives those email alerts. You know, based on um, interest level and, and what you want. But from, you know, some, sometimes when, um, you know, an item's created, you, you want to know if someone's creating items or, um, you know, like a register downloaded or, um, you know, things going on with purchase orders. You know, you want, if you're the person who will be approving those purchase orders, you'd like to get an email, you know, when, um, when it's been, um, sent for approval so that you know to look to um, go online and um, uh, and approve them. So, um, you know, select the ones that are pertinent and select who would receive those and then you just save them. And you'd also modify them on this screen also. A message broadcast is if you want to um, give information to the, the POSs. You'd, you'd put out a message and that would be broadcast to the, the registers. So just something that you want to say to all of them. It's a quick and easy way of doing it. Um, in terms of transactions, modifying time cards, um, you know, it, it, it's the ability to, you know, pick a time frame and um, you know, a system administrator, you can um, go in here and just, you know, if the person didn't clock out and it has, you know, an odd time or whatever, you'd go in here and make those changes. And then um, um, they press the modify and it saves by line. Um, uh, inventory transactions, they range from making your adjustments, um, you know, you have a certain amount received or, you know, in the, in the location and you need to, you don't, for some reason that needs to be adjusted, either broken, stolen, never received, you don't know what happened to it. And so on this screen you'd go in and initiate the adjustment and, um, you know, either go in and commit it so that it 
you know, takes effect, or maybe someone else's role is to review that and commit it. Um, also on here, you can, you know, reprint the receipts for that in case you want to, you know, later have a hard copy of it or something. Um, transfers, you know, similar type process of just moving, you know, if the warehouse has items that you need at the store, you'd initiate that transfer and then commit it to make, to finalize the transaction, you know, and those sometimes are taken up by different roles is why it's separated out like that. Receiving itself does not have the initiate and commit. Um, you know, it, it's a process of just receiving the items. And, and that would just be, you know, you'd receive it to, um, you know, whatever location you, you want it at. You know, it's done by vendor only. So, um, so you'd, you'd select your vendor, um, you know, where you want to receive it, either at the warehouse level or you'd uncheck the button and receive it at the store. Remarks is um, a required field, and so you'd, you'd need to populate it with something. Uh, to add the items to be received, um, you can either just start typing something in and it'll, the AJAX screen is there that'll populate and you can select from there. Or if you really have no idea really what that UPC number is, you can check on this box with the two dots and it shows the item lookup screen. You may have an idea of what category department or just press search <coughs> and it displays all of them from that vendor and you can just um, select which one it is you can do it so it selects all, um, and then it just populates over, and you can put the quantity received. If Now that you receive the item, AG is an auto-generated number when you didn't really know what your UPC number is. Say you received the items and now you have the, the correct UPC, you would add it here, and then um, you know, you'd have the, the correct UPC, but sometimes that's not known when you do the purchase order. Um, and, and so it can be done on the receiving form. And then you just put in the quantity received, you know, and, and those will be shown for that store location. Purchase orders, um, you know, I can briefly touch on these, um, you know, just kind of show you how, how they take place. Um, again, they're done just by a particular vendor. You, you need to select a vendor and you need to select where you want um, the purchase order to be applied for, if it's store level or warehouse level. In this case, I'm, I'm picking a store level. Um, you know, you can put in, it's same, same goes for um, the, the adding the items here as on the other screen. Um, it, it, the AJAX will populate with options available. Um, unit of purchase needs to be default or, you know, if you do have a unit of purchase. Your cost, your retail price, and the number you're, you're buying. Um, and then you would just save this. It asks you if you want to modify the name. I don't. And that created purchase number tw um, 2013 to 2 so it's been created, hasn't been sent or anything. Um, I, my role, I'm going to be sending this for approval, and now it's been approved. Um, oh, well, it's been sent for approval, I'm sorry. And now as, you know, say I've logged out, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be done immediately, but then that needs to be approved. A lot of times there's businesses that have different people take on these roles is why it's so many steps. Now it's been approved. You want that purchase order. Last step is to send it, um, which is the final step on this. And if you have the vendor set up with an email address, it's emailed to them. Otherwise, sending it just processes it. And if you have your own, you call the vendor or have a different paper system for doing it, it's in the system as a purchase order. And, you know, then you would just say, oh, today I've received um, my, my items from this merchant. Oops, I forgot to press receive from. Mm. 
let's see, I'm not seeing it here right now. There we go. I want to receive it at the store. And, you know, this is the amount that was on your purchase order. If you really received five of them, you know, you'd indicate that here. It gives you an indication that you, you have made a change. And, yeah, you did receive five, so you want to save that. And then um, from here, you can also generate your barcode labels directly. And, you know, just get those printed up and you're, you're set to go. Um, in, re in regards to reports having to do with purchase order, you know, you can look at, well, you can look up all things back ordered. I just wanted to show um, variants because um, I made that variance on that one. So um, just wanted to show the report where it should show up showing that, um, you know, the variance was changed by four. I went from one to five. Um, you know, other features are, um, you know, you, you have the ability to do the financial rec uh, reconciliation um, where you put in oops, information um, and, um, you know, of, of what your sales are for the period and, um, and then you would go to reports and do the financial reconciliation report and it reconciles it with the actual information to make sure that you're in sync with, with your expectations of, of transactions. Um, and I'm not going to go through the reports today because we have a couple of other webinars that go in more detail about the different reports. So I'm going to save those for uh, to be taken care of on those. And um, the utilities aspect, um, you know, uh, this would be pretty much a system administration function, um, doing the backups and restores. Um, POS sync aren't commonly done. Uh, it's not really a good idea to sync the POS. Um, there is a system for those messages to push automatically, um, so there shouldn't be a need to sync. Um, item import. Um, the, the system, you know, you, you saw where you can manually add everything one by one. If you have a large quantity to put in at once, um, we have the ability to put that directly into the table, you know, so it doesn't have to be entered one on one. So, um, you know, doing it using the import can save time. Um, it sidesteps the um, you know, it, it'll try to put in whatever you put in, so you could get error messages um, because it's, it's not happy with the information you're trying to stick in the system. So um, you just have to deal with some errors uh, that could occur there. Um, but, you know, again, we have our, our wiki site for you to go to that goes into details, you know, mandatory information on certain imports or um, common issues that come up with, um, you know, trying to do the imports. We have gone through, um, I'm, I'm just going back to the PowerPoint to see, make sure that we've covered everything um, um, that we were intended to talk about. I didn't go, on, on all of these, um, like the discounts when they're created, um, there's a, repo a discount report that will, um, you know, provide you information on your discounts. So you can see how effectively they're being applied or if, you know, they're, they're used more heavily than you thought they would. Kind of gives you an idea for um, future discounts or the use of them. And they can be broken down by stores, registers, et cetera, to pinpoint where your either success areas are or trouble areas, depending on what, what you're seeing.
Same with coupons. Um, I kind of went through the process of setting those up. And then again, of course, we have the wiki link that goes into more detail. And then there's a corresponding report so you can see the effectiveness of using those coupons. Refund reasons would be what um, populates on the POS um, drop-down box that give options for the cashiers as to, um, you know, when someone returns something, a reason why. So it's, it's those options that you pre-selected to be used by the cashiers. Email alerts, we, we talked about the uh, benefits of setting those up and, and using those. Transaction tabs, purchase orders. Um, customer relations management, our CRM piece, um, you know, that setting all of that up um, provides a good vehicle for um, doing promotions and um, trying to cater to your customers to keep them happy and, and coming back. So, you know, using the system to, you know, put in place so that you know, um, you know, which are your valuable customers or how to make other ones more valuable um, kind of is an important feature that, that we have and um, you kind of want to set up to take advantage of being able to track that information. Um, resources available. I've mentioned a couple times the wiki provides a lot of information that helps you get through questions you may have. Um, we're available on chat um, either from retailcloud.com or from the POS itself. There's a button that says chat and you press that and um, the chat question comes to our um, our support department to, to answer. Um, we do have some phone support um, that's contracted business by business at a fee, um, but if you, you don't have that then you know chat's the way to get um, any situation answered. And then of course we can provide on-site setup and support as necessary and then sometimes people have issues that come up, um, you know, the, the, they try to install um, something and it messed with other things that have installed and they need help with it or you know they've done a mass modify that they need to get out of or um, they have issues trying to add new items or something and we're, we're available to help with any of that and, and that would be on a fee basis so that would be quoted before any of that would happen. Um, that concludes the webinar on um, system admin I'd like to open it up for any questions that are out there. Well, I have one. Okay. Um, manufacturer's coupons, how do you log those in so that your scanners read them? Um, you can, when you create a coupon, you know, if uh, you'd have to, you'd have to know what that code is because um, if, if you, if your customers use the same ones, you can create a coupon using, you know, that UPC code it has on there and just create a, a coupon with that. And so you would just scan it and it would know what it was. But it, it, there's no, otherwise it, it wouldn't know and you would just have to manually add that coupon to the transaction. But you could enter a UPC code and have it be have able it to scan. scan. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then, um, is it possible to receive items on the register using the register to receive them, or do you have to do it through CAS? It, they can be received at the register also. Okay. I guess that concludes questions. Um, if you happen to think of any other ones that um, come up when you're trying to do anything, just shoot an email to support at retailcloud.com or, um, you know, you can come on chat with any questions also. Hope this helped clarify some questions. Um, and if you're interested in the item import, that's the webinar for tomorrow. Um, we'll cover other imports also. Uh, but the stress is on the item import. And then we have the, the inventory management webinar on Friday, if, if that's of interest. Um, please, please join us for any of those. Thank you very much. Bye.